This video is gonna take you through all the steps of using the object tracker in Final Cut Pro. Then at the end, I'm gonna show you a couple really cool ways you can use the object tracker to get some powerful effects. I've separated out this video into different parts so you can check out the chapter markers down below if you ever wanna jump to a specific section. The first step, of course, of using the object tracker in Final Cut Pro is adding the tracker. Now, believe it or not, there are actually several different ways you can do just that. The first and primary way is to select the clip that you want to have the tracker, then scroll to the very bottom of the video inspector. Down here, you will see that we can add a tracker. I'll go ahead and click on this add button. From there, we can go ahead and shrink down the size of our tracker by using these orange handles and we can drag it in place by clicking on the middle there. We can also round out the edges by clicking and dragging on this corner handle. Once you get it roughly into position, you'll see at the very top left hand corner that we have three options. We have the option to track in reverse, so if my playhead were further down in the timeline, we can start tracking from there. We can click analyze, which will automatically track both forward and backwards. And finally, we have the option to track just forward. The second way to add in a tracker is by selecting a layer that is over the top of whatever layer you want to track. Then you can click on your transform tool or achieve that with shift T. Clicking on that, you'll see at the top, we now have the option to select transform, track, and there's an additional menu here we can click with this down arrow, which will give us some more tracking options. We'll get into that in just a little bit. From there, we'll go ahead and select the tracker. And again, this gives us all of the controls we could possibly need. I'll go ahead and drag this into position. And finally, we could go ahead and analyze. Another way you can add in trackers is one of my favorites and one of the ways that makes Final Cut Pro so amazing to work with. By clicking and dragging directly on either a title or an effect. So in this instance, I'll click and drag this title directly onto the face of this man that is running. I'll go ahead and release and you'll see that it has now added a tracker circling his face. I didn't have to adjust the settings at all and I could just go ahead and click analyze. Or you can also do this with an effect. So if I wanted this black and white effect directly on his face, click and drag that effect here and now it's on his face. We can push analyze, it'll do its thing. You'll see that he now has a black and white effect on his face. This can be super powerful with your color grading tools. For example, you could click and drag the color wheels effect directly onto his face. Or if you need to quickly pixelate somebody, all you would need to do is drag the pixelation filter, filter over there and you should be good to go. Now, one quick thing I would like to mention is that if you happen to be dragging in a shot, say for example, I want this lower third and I want to track it to the guy's face, but I have another clip on top, you'll notice that as I click and drag this, it's not going to select the man's face, it's going to instead only select the woman's face. So just make sure you are aware of what clips are on top. You may need to disable one clip or just make sure it is selected when you click and drag. And now you'll see that it is selecting his face and not her face. And the very last way you can add in a tracker is if you have an effect applied, say for example, the Gaussian blur or maybe your color wheels, you can select that effect and then go over to your shape mask. I'll click here to add a shape mask. Then I can drag this mask over whatever position I want to track, say for example, his face. Then we can go on up and click on the tracker option. This will automatically place a tracker and we can push analyze. But if we ever want to change the shape of our shape mask, we'll need to go up to the top, click on this down arrow and change the behavior from pin to tracker over to offset from tracker. We could go ahead and disable the scale and then we'll hide this down. If we select the shape object, now we can go ahead and adjust this to be whatever size we want and we can go back to our tracker settings and you'll see that the tracker has remained its original scale. I have my tracker ready in position to track, but there are a few options you may want to take a look at before you track to make sure it works as good as possible. Before you track, go ahead and click on this down arrow next to the tracker. In here, you'll see that we have the tracker source, which is labeled running man. That tells us the proper layer is selected. If you had other layers, you could go ahead and click on that and those would show up here as well. It's also showing us which tracker it is choosing. Currently it's just set to the basic object track. We could also create a new tracker here if we so desired. Underneath that is the behavior, offset from tracker or pin to tracker. I typically like to use the offset to tracker in most circumstances, though if you want a track to be absolutely locked on to whatever you're tracking, then you can change it over to pin to track. 
but I just find that it's a little bit easier to work with the offset from tracker and you tend to get the same results. Underneath that, we have the options of applying the tracker to either the position, the rotation, and the scale. If I were to enable the scale, you'll notice that my subscribe text has vanished. And the reason for that is because it has now smashed that subscribe text all the way down into the tracker's scale. So it has greatly reduced the size of that text. That is because the option is set to scale all fit. You can also change it over to scale all fill that will increase the scale just a little bit. Or finally, we have the option to do scale X and Y. This is going to scale the X and the Y axis separately. I strongly recommend that you do not use this option unless you are using it for a very, very specific reason. Most of the time, it's going to smash your text, making it look something like this. Clicking on that down arrow, I'm gonna go ahead and select scale all fill but it's still too small for my liking. If we go ahead and jump on over into the video inspector, we could scale this up and usually by scaling it up to about 200%, that will fix the issue. Or in some circumstances, when you do scale all fit, you'll need to scale it up to 400%. Personally, I wish this wasn't an issue in Final Cut Pro and I hope that they can address that at some point. I wish it just automatically properly scaled the object and then we would have the choice of scaling it down to 25% if we so desired. With those settings in place, we can go ahead and go over to the top left-hand corner and click on Analyze. This is going to very quickly track through our scene, and when it's green, that means that it has a pretty solid track. If it turns red, that means that the track is not very good. It might introduce some extra jitters. So if we push play, we can see we have this basic track going on. It's not quite to my liking though. That is for a couple reasons. One is that it has the scale track and the scale of the man's face is changing a little bit. So it's giving us a little bit of a pulse effect. Also, maybe I don't want to have the rotation on there. So let's go ahead and adjust that. If you ever want to disable what kind of setting are enabled on a track, go over to the far right hand side and locate the transform properties. With that layer selected, you can click on this little icon in the top right hand corner. Now you'll see that I have a check mark next to position, rotation, and scale. We also have the option of completely removing that tracker from that object. In this instance, I want to remove both rotation and I also want to remove scale. But now my text has gone off the screen because I scaled it up to 200%. Let's go ahead and set this back to 100% so it's at its natural scale. So if we take a look, we can see that the track is working considerably better for two reasons, because one, it's not rotating, and secondly, it is not scaling. Whether or not you use those options is gonna be completely dependent on the shot you are working with and what kind of track you want. Once I'm done tracking, we can go up to the top right-hand corner and push done. Now let's say we need to make some adjustments to our track. Maybe it got off and it's not quite working the way we want it. Well, you have a few ways you can resolve this track. Firstly is to take a look at the track editor. Now, if you don't have the tracking editor, you can simply right click on a clip and then select show tracking editor. You can also achieve that with command option T. Now that I have the tracking editor, you'll notice that there's this blue line. And if I click and drag, I can actually create an entire range. When I release, you'll see that it gives me two options, analyze and delete. If I find that a track is getting off, maybe it's getting really jittery for some reason, I can go ahead and push delete. And what this will do is it will interpolate the frames between this track point and this track point. To better illustrate this point, I've created this basic example. If I push play, you'll notice that the text has tracked along with this circle. However, if I find that I don't like the track, I can go ahead and click and drag between these two track points and then I'll just push delete. And if I push play, you'll notice that the text is no longer dropping down with the circle. That is because it is interpolating between the two positions. So it's moving our text from position A over to position B until the track reattaches here. So this can be really helpful to know if you're dealing with a particularly difficult track, you can go in and clear out a few frames and see if that resolves the issue. You can also retrack an area by clicking in that gray area and then selecting analyze and Final Cut Pro will reanalyze that scene. Another way you can adjust your track is by going over to your video inspector and scrolling down to the bottom. You'll notice here at the bottom, we have our trackers. Currently it's named object track, but if you want to, you can double click on that and rename it to be whatever you like. So I'll just call it face. And now I know that that is the face tracker. You'll also notice here at the bottom, we have an analysis method. By default, it will always be set to automatic. 
if you find yourself having a very hard time with a specific track, you can go ahead and click on this menu and find you have additional options. One is combined, then we also have machine learning and point cloud. Combined is both of these other options put together. Machine learning works really well when you're working with objects that are very common. For example, if you're trying to track an animal, a person, a tree, something along those lines, machine learning is going to work really well. And it has the benefit of working even when that object gets slightly obscured. However, in most instances, I find that point cloud is oftentimes a better option. The point cloud will create a whole bunch of points of tracking on high contrast points, and then it will continue to track throughout the scene. This has the benefit of being able to better track, say a texture on a wall or an object that maybe is not discernible by the machine learning. However, this does come with the problem of if those points get obscured by say a pole or something along those lines, then your tracker can completely fail. In those instances, you'll definitely want to go to the tracking editor and delete those frames so that it can interpolate between the two positions. I'll go ahead and set this back to automatic as it seems to be doing a really great job. You'll also notice though in this tracking menu that here on the right side, we have some keyframes. Now, if I keep moving forward, you'll notice that that keyframe just keeps staying selected. That is because it created keyframes for every single frame of video. If I were to go ahead and delete a large portion of this video, it is now interpolating between those deleted frames. But if I wanted to, I could go in and add a keyframe in this point and you'll see that my tracking editor now has a keyframe there and I could move this tracker directly over his face. Then I could go forward a few frames, move it again and add a keyframe. And so now it's going to interpolate between those points that I've just added. This can be super helpful if you're working with a very difficult track and you need to take over manually. So now that you know how to add and edit a tracker, I think it's important to set some expectations in place of what this tracker can do. This tracker is far from perfect. It does an excellent job if you need to simply track in some text or an image into your scene. However, if you're needing a more complex track, say a planar tracker, where you maybe need to replace a TV screen or something along those lines, then you're probably not gonna have a very good time by using this tracker. It's not quite solid enough. If you do need to do that sort of tracking, you may want to go over to Apple Motion where you can do a four point corner track. Also, if you're planning on doing tracking in your video, maybe try thinking ahead. It could help you a ton if you were to raise your shutter angle on your camera because with a higher shutter angle, you're gonna have less motion blur. And if you have less motion blur, you're gonna have a better track. However, not all circumstances are perfect. Oftentimes, you're just given whatever footage you get. So just keep that in mind when you're in the editing room. And finally, to cap off this video, I want to show you a really cool and practical effect you can do with the object tracker inside of Final Cut Pro. This effect was originally shown by Cody Warner over on his incredible channel. I'll have a link to that down below. And that is to recreate the Beats by Dre look with that locked on camera inside of Final Cut Pro without any plugins. To do that, we'll go ahead and duplicate this original shot by pushing option, clicking and dragging and that will duplicate it. Then from there, with this top shot selected, we can push V to disable it. We'll select the underlying shot and go over to our transform properties and set the scale to negative 100%. This is going to completely flip our image, which means we were tracking the reverse of whatever the camera was originally doing, thus negating the camera's movements. Once we have our shot set up just like so, we can scroll to the bottom of our video inspector and find our trackers. We'll click to add a tracker, then place the tracker over his face. I'm gonna change the analysis method over to point cloud because it is an upside down face, so I find it works a little bit better. Then we can go to the top left and click analyze. Now that we've analyzed that shot, we can re-enable this topmost shot. We'll go to our transform tool, then we can go over to tracker. You'll notice that it's automatically trying to track the underlying shot. We'll need to change the tracker that it selects though because it's added a whole new tracker. To do that, we'll click on this down arrow and change the tracker over to our object track. Now that we've done that, you'll see that the shot is moving along with the object track, but it's still flipped upside down. To fix that, we'll go over to our effects and look up the flipped effect and just apply that onto the top shot. We'll change the direction from horizontal to both. 
so now it's in its original orientation. From there, we can scale it up just a bit so we don't have any black edges, and if we push play, you'll see we now have this locked on headshot effect. However, the rotation is also being applied, which we might not want. To fix that, go on over into your transform tools, click on this down arrow, and then deselect rotation. And just like that, we have locked on this shot. Another really cool and practical way you can use the object tracker inside of Final Cut Pro is to do sky replacements. If you're interested in that, you might want to check out this video where I show you how to do that with an older version of the object tracker in Final Cut Pro. If you follow all the steps that I showed in this video though, you should be able to get through that video with no problem. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.